When leafing through historical reference material, you often stumble upon interesting stories. Stories that may or may not come from only one source. This doesn't inherently mean the story is false or wrong in some way, although it is worth taking with a grain of salt. Today's story comes, at least as far as I've been able to find, from just one book. The first in Ian Toll's excellent Pacific War trilogy, Pacific Crucible. Toll is, from all I've seen, a good resource. His work on the first six frigates, in particular, is something of a gold standard. Nonetheless, as I cover this story, keep in mind I haven't found it mentioned anywhere else. Not even in the Dictionary of American Fighting Ships. That disclaimer aside, I can already hear the question. What is this story about, anyway? Well, for that, I apologize for the clickbaity title. I went through about five or six variations of the title. It does the job, though, so it works. Because, as the story in Toll's book goes, Enterprise avoided being present for the Pearl Harbor attack because of a loose line. Before that, however, a bit of basic background. Enterprise, in common with USS Lexington, was absent from Pearl Harbor on that fateful Sunday. Both of the aircraft carriers had been sent out, to reinforce American islands, which saw them both at sea on December 7th. Lexington had been sent to deliver aircraft to Midway. Enterprise, by contrast, was sent to deliver planes to Wake Island on November 28th, 1941. This she did well enough before turning around to return to Hawaii. The aircraft carrier was scheduled to return by December 6th, which would have seen Enterprise in dock when Japan struck. This is all easy enough to confirm. Where things get interesting is in why the ships hadn't returned on time. The common story, as repeated in the American Fighting Ships entry, is that Enterprise was delayed by rough weather. Instead of returning on the afternoon of December 6th, the ships were now due on the morning of the 7th. This will generally be the accepted course of events. Toll's telling of the story expands upon this. While he makes no mention of the storms, he does lead into his story with due back on the morning of December 7th. Perhaps he felt no need to bring up the storms, although I can't say for sure. In any event, with the initial delay already mentioned, Toll adds this. But on Saturday afternoon, northwest of Oahu, a line dropped by a destroyer had managed to wrap itself around one of the propeller shafts, of the cruiser Northampton. That's a direct quote from the book. Toll then goes on to say this was a relatively common kind of accident, although it did force the task force to stop and clear the line. How long that took, he doesn't say, but he does note it kept them from arriving on time. Is this story true or accurate? I can't say for sure myself. Toll has a wide and extensive bibliography, many sources of which I have no access to. However, as mentioned, this particular story doesn't come up in the fighting ship entry for Enterprise or Northampton. And since he didn't specify which destroyer dropped the line, I can't check that either. This story hasn't come up in any source I have access to, which would make me leery if Toll weren't a well-regarded source, at least so far as I've seen. Nonetheless, while we're taking with a heaping pile of salt, I think it's a fun story, in the neat historical facts kind of way. Imagining that Enterprise's luck extended that far back to keep her and her escorts from Pearl Harbor. Just think of it this way. If this story is true, USS Enterprise avoided being sunk in harbor because a destroyer managed to accidentally tie a line around Northampton's shaft. It's the kind of thing that would be tossed out of an alternate history story as too unrealistic. Which, ironically enough, makes me more inclined to believe it on some level. Reality, especially when studying history, is often stranger than fiction. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And I'll see you in the next one.